Greetings. I'd like to show you how to use the InnoScript Studio or otherwise known as Inno Installer to create a environment where end users install the software onto their computer instead of having like a portable version or you know something that uh, they're just easy for them to lose. We want them to be you know easy to find and easy to use. So we're going to get started. Today we're using the uh, combo lock squeeze machine, but you can actually uh, watch this and uh, modify the steps to any type of software. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is, is we need to get to the actual correct place to get the software if you don't already. You can just uh, Google it, uh, NO Setup, and you should be able to find this site. And what we want to do is, on the download, a little slow today it seems like. There we go. Okay, th first thing we want to do is, is we we want the, there, there's quite a few different versions here that you can use. What we want to do is, is the quick start pack is actually what I recommend. What it does is it's got a, uh, a helper that will help you set up the the environment to uh, to to work with it makes it easier in other words and you can do all kind of things with no setup i'm not going to cover all those but you can a uh, custom installer do your own graphics there's all types of uh, of uh, ways to customize it you can uh, also just google that all right so what we'll do is is i recommend you download this version quick start and get it installed if you don't already and the encryption module they'll ask you if you want to install it I, I install everything myself that's totally up to you but we need this one to continue so we've got it installed correct so let's move on forward we'll start it up and when it starts up if you've got the correct version the script studio you're going to get this new project create new here what we'll do is we'll go with a sample script Let's go ahead and go with it. If you choose blank, it means you're going to have to manually enter it in. But let's go with the sample script. Do OK. Then you're going to get this pop up here. Go next. And this is where we, we start changing everything up. You actually name it whatever you would like here. I will just call it Combo Lock machine all right and application version of course that's totally up to you I'm leaving this and what we want to do is is put your name company name or whatever in this field now here on the application website put in a website that you would like people to visit because we can place this URL in the user start menu under the uh, application name that it's easy so let's go ahead and just we'll leave an example we'll put your URL in there we'll do it next now here's where it gets tricky and you need to pay attention so what we'll end up doing here is actually we're not going to put it in the programs folder because the combo lock needs write access and if you place in the programs folder it's not going to get the correct access it may work it may not but you don't want to have some users working and some not it's going to uh, cause you an a nightmare so we're going to go custom and then there's an example file here just a second let me find it and here we go okay so this one is an actual example script file you do not load this one in it will break things it might not even load anyway with this text at the top but I caution you do not load it in all right so there's some notes here go ahead and read the notes but what we were looking for is under our custom field. I'm going to do a uh, control C and copy that. And I'm going to paste it right here with a control V. What this does is, is this places it's in the user's documents folder. And that's what we want to do. We're going to leave the folder name as is. You can change it if you like. And I always uncheck that because we don't want them to change it. And, of course, we don't want to check that because it needs a folder. 
So we do our next. All right, and what we'll do is now we are looking for the actual exe file for combo lock. What we'll do is we browse to the folder that you have downloaded already, and it'll look something like this. Uh, you probably got a file that looks something like a folder. I should say it looks like this with the brander and the software. Do not mess with the brander. We're looking in the software. We want to go to the exe, and now we need to add some folders. And again, this is important. We will make sure we're in our software folder. We want to do assets. Over here, yes, we want all of the all of the subfolders. I don't know why it does that. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. All right, and we need to add the other folder. Software, make sure you're in the software. Do your data. Yes, all subfolders. And that should be good there. Let's see, allow end user start application after setup is finished. Sure, if you want to uh, do that, what it does is it places a checkbox on the end asking them if they want to go ahead and start it. That's fine. And make sure that's not checked. So we got that. And there is the application start menu folder. So when they go to their start menu, that's what it's going to say. We don't want them to change anything. And right here is the internet shortcut. That's the URL I was talking about you can place in the start folder. So we're going to go do that. The uninstall icon, I don't put that in there. They can always go to uninstall software to do that. And you can also, if you want to, let them place an icon on the desktop. And also on the start and the quick launch. So they get the choice to do that if they like. So we go next. Now here you can place your actual license file information before information after I'm not going to go into that self-explanatory you can have a text file and i do believe a, a like an rtf file either one and get it ready beforehand and put it in there that's totally up to you next okay now your setup languages that's totally again up to you the software is in english so you make your choice there. I'm leaving it in English. Okay, now we're going to, we want to actually save some information here. Okay, so what we want to do is, is where we're going to save this actual exe setup file. So I've already got this one here. I'm going to create this folder which I already have. You're going to create it, I should say. I just called mine NOEXE Setup. We select the folder. Again, this is where you're saving the, the installer file that you will pass to your customer. Okay, the, the setup, we'll just call it, for our example, Combo Lock Setup. Now the icon file, you can choose one. It's totally up to you. Choose your own. I'm going to pick one from right here, an ICO file. All right, set password. That's totally up to you again. If you want to password protect it for people, so people have to enter it in, it's one password for all. I'm going to leave it blank. So let's go ahead and read this. So what we're saying here is the the uh, script wizard that we actually installed the whole thing right that I showed you earlier we want to yes what this does is make it easier later if you want to make simple changes and we'll we'll go over that in just a second so we'll do it next in other words leave it checked okay so now we do finish okay and here is the question do you want to do it right now? We're going to go no because we need to make some changes. And I please pay attention on this because uh, this is very important to uh, make everything work correctly. There's a few little steps we've got to change here. 
I'd like to show you, let's go back to the example file again. And also something I should note is since this is going to the example file, uh, is it may be named, you know, with an extension of ISS. I will, uh, if I remember correctly, I'll include one with a text so it's easy to open. But in either case, I use Notepad Plus. It's actually Notepad Plus Plus. And it makes it easy to open files like this. But, okay, so what we need to do is you'll notice right here, under the files area, we need to make a little modification. So we'll go down to there's setup, there's languages, task. Okay, here are, here's the files. What we're going to do is is just showing you. We'll change it in our actual software here, but I'm showing you here. You'll see the app and app under these two folders that we added. We need to make a little change and add. What we're doing is adding this portion here and here in very important steps. So let's go find it here. There's our setup languages. There's our files here. So here's our app and assets. So what we need to do is put the backslash, not a forward. We're using a backslash. And just like it says there, assets. And also here, backslash. Again, not a forward. You'll notice that that is a capital D for data. So that we're going to do the same thing. Okay, this is, if you do not do this, the software will not work. You must make this step and do it correctly. Okay, everything else should be good to go. We're going to go ahead and save it. So you can save this wherever you would like. And this is make it easier later on you. So we're just going to call it setup. You can name it whatever you like. Okay, we have saved that now. What we'll do is go up here to this icon, and it's going to start. Okay, I paused it because uh, on some computers that can take a little while uh, to compile all the files, compress, and everything. So we want to make sure that we've got a successful message here saying that it finished and all, all that good stuff. All right, so now we have our setup file. Let's go ahead and find it. Remember, we put this folder name, and there's our setup file. All right, you want to install it on your computer to make sure it works before you distribute it, of course. And also, if you uh, really want to be professional, get you a uh, code signing certificate and sign it, and that will help you uh, in the long run over time develop a trusted relationship with Microsoft and others so they don't flag your files. Now there could be in certain El Cheapo as I call them or ones that want to sell a virus program it may actually show a virus if they do it like on virus total a couple of them but you know take into uh, take into account the actual software, I should say, the vendor, the actual creator of the virus program, where they're located at. There's some in China and other places that flag software like this as having a virus. Well, they want to sell their virus program. But if you look at the, the reputable ones, Norton and all the others, they do not flag it. So that should tell you something right there. And that's also something to remember if your customers ever ask you. You can repeat what I just said because it is true. All right, you uh, install it and everything should uh, work fine. All right, I think that'll cover it for this one. Thanks for watching and have a great day.